Right, not what we want to hear. <laughs> Thank no. you, Emily. This isn't what you want to hear either. Mm -hmm. The latest inflation numbers are out and they confirm what Americans are really feeling. Things are way more expensive. Inflation hit 8.6%. That's the highest level in 40 years. Let's bring in Fox Financial Analyst Phil Flynn to discuss this. Phil, glad you're here. This report worse than many expected. What's the reaction today? Uh, the reaction is shock, dismay, and I'll tell you, there is a lot of people out there that are feeling pretty bad about inflation. You know, not only did we get that headline number, guys, which was the worst we've seen in 40 years, we saw consumer confidence fall to the lowest level of the Jimmy Carter days, okay? So there's no doubt that these high inflation numbers are taking a toll on the American psyche. And, and that usually is a forerunner of a recession because if people become afraid to spend money, that's when the economy could really start to contract. Phil, how do you think the Fed will respond to all of this? Do you think that more aggressive interest rates are on the way? Um, I don't think so at this point, but um, you know what? The Fed's under a lot of pressure, and it, in fact, even from the Biden administration, you know, the Biden administration says, you know, the Fed's independent. We're not going to get involved like the last guy that was president. Uh, but now we're hearing more reports out of the White House that the inflation isn't their fault. You know, it was a Fed mistake. Um, and so that's kind of a change of policy. But I think in the last 24 hours, the Biden administration have blamed the oil companies. They blame Vladimir Putin. You know, they blame the little man in the moon. And, you know, I mean, they're blaming everybody but themselves. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you look at their poll numbers, it's the Biden administration that's feeling the heat for this uh, unbelievable inflation. It is important to note that it is not just here in the United States. Countries are, uh, around the world are feeling inflation as well. We were showing some of the sectors there with the increases you're feeling at the gas pump, groceries. It seems to be all over. Is it any one sector in particular driving this? You know, I believe it's the energy sector, right? I mean, that's where a lot of this comes down to, right? Um, and if you look at the cost of gasoline, you look at the cost of e uh, diesel fuel, you look at natural gas prices, uh, that powers the economy, right? You know, we would all like to have wind and solar, and that's great, but that's such a small percentage of the, you know, the electricity capacity and, and the electric car thing isn't even close to being a major factor yet. So if you look at all those prices, uh, that's what's really slowing it down. Yeah, you know, did the war in Ukraine impact the inflation and supply chains? Sure. Did, did we have problems with COVID that, that increased inflation? Yes. But those problems weren't insurmountable, right? I mean, there are th steps that we could have taken a few months ago. Of course, we were told then, ah, this is going to pass, right? It's all transitory. Well, now we know it's not transitory. And the actions we could have taken months ago to alleviate the shortage, like try to produce more oil, produce more food, uh, and now it's uh, going to be a game of catch up before we can get ahead of this inflation now. Bill, do you think it's all doom and gloom as we approach the second half of 2022? Do you think this will get any better? I think it could, because if I look at the poll numbers and I look at the midterm elections, you know, that's when things have a tendency to change. You know, not, not just the Biden administration. You look at other administrations, President Clinton, who got a lot of credit for the economy. Uh, really, after the midterms, he got, you know, really hurt but then change his policies. You know, he started to realize, hey, what we've got going isn't working, and if I want to be a one-term president, I better reverse some of the things that we're doing, and that's what he did. Can Biden do the same thing? We're not seeing the, the signs of that yet, but if he doesn't, you know, the way things are going, he will continue to be, uh, you know, a one-term president risk for sure. Phil Flynn, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks.